In this segment, we will talk about how to connect specifically to the LoRaWAN sensor LSN version 2. It looks like uh, this here. And uh, what we'll cover is uh, how to connect the uh, temperature sensor, which looks like this, with uh, the sensor node on the other end here, attached to the uh, LSN50 device, and also how uh, this can upload data through the gateway into the Things Network Cloud. So uh, before we start, uh, we have now set up our gateway. And if you haven't watched that video, please uh, watch the first segment in our video training series to get more familiar with the gateway setup. Uh, and uh, of course, after we set up, we always need to plug it in so we can uh, access and upload the data. So we have the gateway here. I'm just going to plug it in here. So after the gateway is plugged in, uh, now you have a communication line set up between the gateway itself to the Things Network. And all you need now is to set up the sensor to communicate to the gateway, then we'll be able to upload data into the Things Network. So uh, just a quick orientation around the sensor itself. Um, when the sensor comes uh, from outside the box, you'll see uh, antenna and a sensor unit, uh, something like this. And uh, obviously, the antenna screws on the top of the, um, the sensor unit. And then um, this sensor, uh, you can open it up and see what's inside of it. So uh, after you, there are four screws on the top on each end of here. And you can just uh, unscrew these and it pops right out. Uh, and you can see in detail uh, what the inside of the sensor looks like. Uh, and in order to connect the temperature sensor we have here I, that I have just shown you, uh, one end of this is going to actually connect into the board down here where you see the kind of where the connection is. Uh, it connects into the board itself where the uh, connection will be made and the sensor communications will happen so that the board will read the data from the temperature sensor and upload through the antenna to the gateway and then through the gateway now we'll be able to see on things network the data is coming from the sensor itself uh, so that is the kind of the broad overview of how this whole data communication works. So uh, in order to connect this sensor uh, into this board, uh, there is a step that I will, will need to show you. So uh, in order to show you, I will just show you on the computer here. So first, uh, the easiest way to access this is to uh, basically just Google LSN50-V2. And pretty much the first result comes up. Uh, you can just click on this. This will take you to the website where it will show you the sensor descriptions. What we need is going to documents and then click on user manual and case studies. And what we need is the latest user manual.
So this is kind of the menu of the entire uh, features and how to connect to the different functionalities of this sensor. Uh, this, in order to find the instructions to connect, we are actually, in fact, going to go down a couple of different pages. on page 28. So let's just scroll down to page 28. So here what you can see is uh, it even though it looks a little bit different from the sensor that we have right now. Uh, the connection is essentially pretty much very similar. Uh, by similar is that uh, what you are going to do is it has the red line. Uh, and the red line always means it's going to connect to a voltage port. Uh, so if I come back um, so basically, what you're going to do is uh, you're going to take out screws uh, that secure this board uh, to the top of the device. And the screws, uh, the four different screws are located basically around the corners of, of the top board here uh, that you will be able to see. The four different ones. After you unscrew it, uh, you turn basically turn this board back, and you'll be able to see there are series of different ports on there. Uh, and what you need to do is you go back to the manual here, and uh, you can be able to see that the Right line connects to VCC. There's the VCC port on here, and uh, the yellow line is going to connect to the PB3, which is also labeled on the back of the circuit board. Uh, and also there is the gray line. Um, in this particular sensor, we are not actually having that gray line, we are actually having a black colored cable here instead. So um, that is going to be our ground connection, which is also labeled in the back of the circuit board. So after you connect to these ports, uh, you will basically put this board back onto the inside the device. And the, the connection, again, as I showed a little bit earlier, uh, you can kind of see that the different cables that is being connected into the sensor node. Uh, and once this is connected, uh, you can securely uh, put the cover on. Uh, but right now, we, act we are actually going to start the sensor itself uh, to see if it's uh, connecting right now. So the way to start uh, this sensor is by uh, changing the plug. Uh, in the manual, it's called a jumper plug. And the plug looks like uh, basically this yellow piece right here, uh, which you can see where my uh, the screwdriver is pointing at this plug, you're gonna basically pull this out. So this is kind of the plug that you have. Uh, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna plug this plug kind of like a bridge. So it's gonna connect both of the, uh, the pins in there. So the pins that I'm referring to 
are basically these uh, two top pins that is coming up from the board, the metal ones uh, there. So we're going to basically plug it in here. And uh, it didn't work. So um, there is a orientation uh, to this. So make sure that you are plugging the right way. And if you didn't, uh, it's OK. You can just basically plug in back again, like what I did just now. So I'm going to just demonstrate to you what you're going to see once you plug it in. So once you plug it in, you'll see there is a, a green light just beeped on the top. Uh, not beeped, I mean flashed. Then you will see the green light flash a couple times again. Uh, we just saw it flash once. So that's that means it's at least turned on uh, and it's ready to communicate. Uh, and then the next step is going to be going to the Things Network and see what uh, the communications are looking like. So uh, as I mentioned before, uh, you can log into your own Things Network account. And uh, first, when you go, uh, just go to the, click on the things industries, and then go to applications. Uh, we have already previously set up an application to store all the different sensors. So in this case, I'm just going to show you how it works first. And uh, uh, we have previously set this up to match the serial number of this device, which is this device right here. OK, so uh, after you plug in the jumper, as I mentioned earlier, you will see there are lights blinking inside the sensor. and. Just now, we actually saw something incoming message. As you can see, it's, uh, payload information, so on and so forth. And uh, you will be able to see that the sensor is successfully connected. It is sending data about various information about the battery level, uh, if the door status is open. So we, since we have kept it open, to check the uh, connection. Uh, and door in this case is basically the case cover. Uh, and we also see the humidity sensor and temperature sensor is giving us proper uh, readings in this case. So that is good. And uh, what we can check further uh, is to go to uh, UBIDOT and find and refresh the page, as always, and to find the sensor that we have, which is uh, matching the serial number we have. And you'll be able to see the Last upload is a minute ago, and the different uh, variable information uh, that has been sent over time. So um, this is checking basically how this works. But obviously, uh, you might be asking, how do I actually connect this sensor inside the things network? So uh, what you can do is, uh, again, sim very similar to what I mentioned in the previous 
uh, video on connecting the LHT65 Jogino uh, sensor. You can go to add and device and then search the brand Jogino. Uh, the model name is going to be LSN50 version 2. And then everything else is pretty much uh, pre-filled already. As I mentioned uh, in the previous video, use the US profile. And now you can verify that the sensor looks something like that. Uh, and then the rest of the information is pretty much similar to the video I showed you, uh, the third video in the series. And uh, you can choose the second frequency used by the Things Network. Uh, these information, the app EUI, device EUI, and the app key, you can find these uh, on the device tag. And uh, I showed you how you can extract that information in the previous video. So you can go and watch that uh, to get these informations. Uh, and uh, once you find these information and fill them in, you name your device. In my case, I just use the device uh, serial number for me to keep a proper uh, organization of the different sensors I have. And then you click register and device. And uh, once you click that, you will be able to see uh, the sensor is going to be listed down as one of your end devices. And then once you click on that uh, end device, uh, you'll be able to see that, uh, as I mentioned before, the different information, especially in under live data, where you can check the data is coming in or not coming in. Uh, if you have a problem. So uh, there you have it. This is uh, teaching you how to connect the LoRaWAN sensor node uh, specific type LSN50 version 2 uh, and connecting a temperature and humidity sensor to this uh, node, sensor node, and how to send data uh, through the sensor to the node and then uh, into the things network in order to read the data uh, and also store them somewhere in UBDAS. Uh, and the connection between the thing next, things network and the UBDAS uh, is going to be uh, pretty much automatic uh, because the fact that we have set up the application that uh, includes all of the different end devices, so all of the sensors. And uh, any sensor that is included in that application is going to send uh, data directly into the UBDOTS uh, for it to be able to store and read them automatically. So um, if you are not familiar with setting up that step between the thing that Things Network and the UBDOTS, I have included the uh, instructions in the previous uh, segment uh, with how I set up the uh, LHT65 sensor. Uh, the instructions are including that. So um, hopefully you find this helpful. In the next segment, I will talk about uh, how to set up a, a very similar sensor. So I have it here. Uh, it's actually, you'll notice it looks exactly the same with the transmission unit, but on the other end, it's a uh, uh, distance detection sensor. Uh, and uh, this is going to cover how to connect that to the things network and how you can recognize this sensor uh, in, the, in the things network. Thank you for watching.